All right, we're going to do a painting of a landscape today. I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, and we're going to start off by putting a few colors down onto our palette. I'm going to grab some uh, cobalt blue here. You could also use ultramarine. I'm just going to put it right here, uh, actually in its own well, because I don't want it to get confused with other colors. Um, I've got a little yellow ochre, I've got some burnt umber, um, and I've got lemon yellow already. So I think I pretty much have everything I need for my landscape here today. Maybe a little bit more burnt umber because it's looking a little, uh, looking like I'm a little bit out of it. There we go. Okay, I think that's uh, just what we need to get started. I am going to wet my paper and I'm using a really rough handmade paper here. This is the Shazan paper and the watercolors I'm using are by Joy Art and they're very inexpensive. Um, so if you do know somebody that just wants something inexpensive to get started with, I will link to that in the video description. And I'm not taping down my paper because I find that rough papers don't tend to buckle quite as much. And um, I like that look of kind of that natural deco edge. So I'm just wetting about two thirds of the paper from the top. And I'm going to add some water here to my cobalt blue. Uh, I want to get it to kind of like a, I would say, um, oh, kind of like a skim milk consistency. Now, when you're working straight from the tube, like I am with this color here, you just have to make sure that you don't get any clumps on your brush because when you put it on your paper, you could end up with some really, uh, you know, patchy uh, color. I'm probably going to have somewhat of a patchy color just because um, I'm on this super rough paper. You can see the texture of that as I'm painting. I'm going to move my water bucket back just a little bit because I feel like it's catching, uh, casting a little bit of a shadow. But uh, I just really love when I first put that wash down on the handmade paper, I love seeing how it just kind of um, all, all those grooves just kind of catch the paper differently. And because this is a handmade paper, the um, the texture is not the same all the way through. You're going to have some parts with, you know, you don't see that, that machine made texture that you see on some papers, which I don't like the machine made looking texture. I really love something a little more random. And that's what you get when you go with a little bit nicer of a paper. But I always say, you know what, paint with what you have and um, you can always upgrade and you can always experiment and try new things as you kind of get further along in your painting career. Well, I think I might take a little bit of Prussian blue because um, I feel like I want it a little bit deeper up to the top and uh, I'm just gonna put that right on top of the other Prussian blue I have there, but I'm kind of, I kind of just wanna go with that wet juicy paint. That's kind of fun. I don't do this very often, but I find when you're working with like a student grade paint, um, it does perform a little bit better when you go right from the tube. So if you have an issue with your student grade paint not performing quite the way you want, try it right from the tube and you will get a more fresh look there. That deepened that up a little bit and cooled it down. Alt, uh, cobalt's a very warm blue, whereas, um, whereas Prussian is a cool blue. Okay, now I'm just gonna tip my paper so I can see if I've got my horizon line fairly level. There, that looks all right. And now I'm gonna grab a paper towel. And for some reason, paper towels work better than rags for this. I am going to um, lift off some clouds. And I wanna lift off quite a bit over here. And then I'm going to kind of squinch up my, squinch, that's a technical term, up my paper towel and just kind of, uh, I want this, the clouds to appear to be wisping across the sky, like maybe you got some kind of wind going on. the idea there and then I'll go to a drier spot and then I can lift up more defined clouds so you end up with a little bit of a, that wispy look uh, which can be kind of tricky to do because it's really your paper towel wants to give you those kind of cotton ball clouds so that just helps you get that little bit of a wispy effect and I'm kind of pulling it in a diagonal pattern so that I get the um, kind of windswept look and you can actually wipe some away if you have a good quality paper uh, that's internally and externally sized you usually can get away with doing some wiping but when in doubt blot because if your paper is not really robust you will get um, you will get some pilling so and here I could see I've got kind of a concentration I just want to kind of go along the edge of my paper and just lift up that puddle uh, 
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing I want to do while this is still damp is paint some faraway mountains. I'm going to switch to a round brush and I am going to uh, take some of that cobalt blue that we were using and I'm going to mix it in with a little bit of crimson here and give myself kind of like a uh, uh, just a cool dusty purple. Need a little bit more blue in there. And then I'm just going to go along the horizon line here and paint myself a little mountain range far off into the distance. And don't worry if it's fuzzy because you want it to be kind of fuzzy. This is far away. And you can use your imagination really. I mean you just want to get that kind of row of of mountains. Make it a little bigger there. I try to vary it a little bit. And don't even worry if it's not completely um, uniform because it will uh, it'll look more natural. It'll look like you have some kind of mist coming in. And then I want to put like a uh, kind of like a um, maybe like a lake in there and I need a bigger brush than what I was using so I'll grab this one here. So I'm going to go down here at the base of this mountain. I'm just going to do it with water first and just kind of add in kind of just like a water area. I'm going to grab some of the um, ultramarine blue that we used at the beginning. I'm going to grab a little bit of Prussian blue too. And I'm going to add this in. I'm going to kind of get the outlines of where I want my lake to be. I want to come up here to those mountains. And I'm going to let it kind of fade off as I pull it forward because I know I'm going to have some trees and stuff so I don't want to have a really defined uh, line there. I think I'll just pull it right off the edge of the page too. So I'm just going to drag that over this way just so I don't have a, a harsh line where the lake ends so I can overlap it with some trees. Uh, now I'm going to grab some sap green here and I think I'll mix it with a little bit of Prussian blue to darken it, cool it down so I can have these some faraway trees. And I'm going to go up here near the mountains and just kind of dab some trees in. I want these to be kind of fuzzy and far away so that's why I'm doing it against the mountains I just painted. Bring it right up to this water area. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of um, sap green on its own. Maybe even add in a little bit of lemon yellow there. Now I'm pretty pleased with how these colors did reconstitute because I had some dry in my palette and uh, like that lemon yellow it did come right to life again for me so that's nice. A little bit of this brighter color in here by the lake. And do a little bit over here. And a little bit of that darker green up here. This brush I'm using is a Princeton Neptune. Um, I just grabbed it because it was right handy. It holds a lot of pigment in water, so you do get a really uh, a really good brush load of of uh, media when you're when you're using it. Uh, I like these a lot. Um, I also like the Mimic brushes. The Neptunes are a little easier to find if you're not in the United States though so I just wanted to put that out there because I know I know it's it's limited what you can get in different parts of the world but Princeton's a fairly uh, well-known company. 
Okay, this is coming along nicely. I'm really pleased with this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to work on some more trees, but I really don't want to dry my paper because I'm really loving the way that went to what happens on this um, this handmade paper. And I will put a still shot of this on my blog when I post this video so you can get a good um, in-depth look at this. And I am going to grab, I think I'm going to try some of this yellow ochre here and mix that with some of the sap green. Get us a nice earthy warm green and bring some of that in here. I'm going to go with a bigger brush because I want to cover a little bit more area. And I think I'm going to grab a little more sap green to tell you the truth. These uh, these tubes are nice and big so I don't have to worry about... Oop, that's emerald. That's not sap. Hold the phone. We need the sap green, not the emerald green. I'm going to put it over here though so I don't get into the emerald by mistake. I honestly don't. Emerald green is one of those colors I rarely use. If you guys use emerald and you have some good ideas for how to use it, please let me know because it's just one of those colors I I never really I never really get to and I have it in several sets but it's for whatever reason I just just one of those ones I just don't use and I am bringing this up around the edge here I like to work I like to have like some guidelines to guide the eyes through and so we're gonna have this patch of yellow kind of coming through and snaking around and then it's gonna be the clouds that draw us through the picture uh, I think that's a great way to uh, kind of help a viewer get through the picture and also create some interest while you're working. Now I'm going to grab some Prussian and mix it right in with that sap green because I'm going to want a patch of um, pine trees and I'm going to start here while, while everything's wet and things are going to fuzz and that's fine because I can it's going to give me the body of the trees and then I can go in with details later. I love that Prussian blue though. My goodness, it's beautiful. Such a pretty color. I you know, I, I it is kind of fun to work from the tube once in a while because especially if you're not too worried about wasting expensive paint because these are very inexpensive. You know, it's a it's a fun it's a fun thing to do. Oh, I feel like I want to have a little bit of um, of that more yellowy color back there. I didn't fill in everything because I wasn't sure what I was doing there. I'll fill that in. Also do a little bit more of that around the, around the edges there. I like a cotton paper. This is a cotton paper, by the way. Um, I like it because I feel like it doesn't... You don't have spots dry quicker than other spots. It stays wetter longer, so you don't have to rush, and you don't end up with those weird hard edges. He, you know, just awkward hard edges because something's dry too quickly on you. Uh, let's see. I want this. I'm gonna vary this a little bit. Maybe I'll take this and grab it a little more yellow, lemon yellow there. Maybe even a little yellow ochre. I'm not worried about contaminating the wells here because I um, because they're almost used up. I've used up almost the paint, all the paint there, so I don't have to worry so much about that. And I wanna, I'm going to go on the edge of my brush there. A little more pressure. I do want this a little bit darker. I like to use a big brush because, uh, especially until I get to the details, because then I can work the whole picture at once and I don't fuss and worry about details. And a nice cool crisp, doesn't it look like a nice cool crisp spring morning here in our little imaginary land. Oh, all right. I love that Prussian blue, my goodness. I'm going to put a little bit more of that in here. And I like to let those colors mix together. When you have a pretty paper like this, it's nice to kind of let the qualities of the paper uh, kind of steal the show a little bit. And I love it, the, the areas where they come together. You can leave little bits of white showing through and you can keep that sparkle if you want to. It, it does add a little bit of um, of life to it. So don't feel like you have to cover every square inch of the paper. And I like to drag up the uh, treetops like that and just kind of let them feather out to the uh, 
shapes that they want. I do feel like I want a little, um, a little difference in here, so I'm going to go in with some of that crimson. Add a little bit of Prussian and a little bit of sap green to it. And see, this just gives us a different earthy uh, dark. That purple just, it really does some really interesting stuff in the shadows. What was that over there? I like that Prussian blue, so I don't want to cover that up. Okay, now at this point, I'm going to dry this with my uh, heat tool. You can either dry it with a hairdryer heat tool or just let it dry on its own. And then really all we have to do on this easy painting is to uh, add a few details. So I think it's fun to warm up your day of painting with something easy like this. You don't have to spend hours on every painting you do. And I often find it's nice to do some of these quick and easy paintings because it warms you up. You don't have this big expectation of, oh, I've just spent four hours on this and now I could do anything that would ruin it. I don't want to do anything that's going to ruin it. You can be fun and free and, uh, and have a good time with it. Now I want to try a brush it's called a rigger and, or it's also called a dagger. Sometimes it looks like a, uh, or a sword. It looks like a, uh, a little flat brush, but it's got tapered bristles. And this is really great for doing trees and anything, anytime you want kind of like a random long line. And so you can see when I wet it, how the bristles clump together. So this is such a useful brush. And um, if you're, you know, looking for the perfect gift for an artist and you know they're fairly new to, uh, to painting and they're wa a watercolorist, uh, I would recommend trying one of these. I think they would really enjoy it. And it's one of those brushes that not many artists would necessarily have. It's not something that usually comes in a set of uh, brushes and I do like this Princeton Neptune because it holds a lot of paint and uh, water. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw in some of these uh, kind of fo more focal point trees and I'm going to start down at the base, try to keep my hand out of the way. Uh, I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to start it kind of uh, here, right like behind this bright area that we have and I'm going to pull up a tree a little bit higher than the other elements there. Make sure I have plenty of water in there. And I'm again, it's Prussian blue and sap green. This is a very beautiful earthy color. Okay, so now I'm going to start tapping in my bristles uh, of the tree, the, the boughs of the tree. And the thing I like about this is I can keep turning my brush and get some really uh, natural looking, interesting, uh, interesting shapes here. Because sometimes I feel like if you use the same brush the whole time in your painting, uh, it can be very easy to have everything look really similar, all your brush strokes. So just by switching up a brush, uh, it can give you a whole different way to uh, to create a tree. Even if you use the same techniques to create it, using a different brush can make a big difference in how it actually comes out and looks. I like to put a few things that are like close up in my pictures to develop scale. So we have all these lovely kind of further away things you get a few things close up and it really does make it make it look nice. Now something else I might do here is I might grab some of that purple that we had mixed. A little less green in this one. Let's keep it like nice and fresh here. More of that crimson. And I'm just gonna drop some of that in there in the shadow in the the base of the tree where it's a little more shadowy. Now um I want to offer a tip if you are using student grade paints and you do want to let them dry in a palette so you can keep going back and using them. Sometimes student grade paints will crack in the palette, especially if you're putting a lot of paint down to have it all dry for you. So in that event, um, when you squeeze out your paint, mix in a couple drops of either honey or vegetable glycerin and that will, um, that will keep your paint semi moist and it will keep it from cracking. So I uh, just want to offer that up. It's a wonderful way to keep your paint more usable and have your cheaper paint behave more like an expensive um, paint. So, so give that a whirl. So now we've got this beautiful dimension in there. And uh, maybe if I bring it up to the camera a little bit more. Okay, it's, it's hard to tell when it's really wet like that, but it just gives you a nice, uh, nice grounding effect when you have the bottom of the tree nice and uh, nice and kind of bright like that. Uh, I think I'm going to throw in a few little, like kind of little saplings here. With that beautiful, uh, 
earthy purple color. And this again called a dagger or a rigger. Such a fun brush to work with. Also another tip. Uh, working in threes, having clumps or groups of odd numbers, uh, just tend to look a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Grabbing a little more of that Prussian, a little more sap green. I feel like I want a little bit, maybe I'll do a couple. In here, I don't know if I, how far I want to bring it down or not. I might need to bring it down a little bit more than what I have. I like to have trees at different distances from the front of the painting. This is a type of a uh, really loose and fluid landscape that you could really get yourself lost in. And there's a lot of myths out there about student grade paint that, well, you can't get a good, you can't get vibrant color. You can't get, you know, you, you know, it's not going to, the paints just aren't going to paint well for you. But um, yeah, it's it's not as much about the paint as it is about the attitude of the artist, I think. So, you know, use what you have. The, the paint does not make the artist, the artist makes the painting. And then I am going to just soften the bottom of those trees. I'm actually going to use a different brush for that. So my brush is damp. I'm going to pull it along the bottom of those trees and just kind of help that paint float down into the shadows. And gosh, I think that might be just about done for the trees. I want to do something in here for the um, foreground. I think I'm going to mix up something a little bit lighter. I'm going to grab some of that lemon. And it doesn't need to be super clean because it is, uh, there's still going to be shades of green and yellow ochre. And the reason I'm grabbing the yellow ochre is because it's a nice warm yellow. It's also a little more opaque. So if I do some like little um, grasses in here, they're going, to, they're going to show up beyond, you know, on top of what I've already painted. So that's just a, a quality of yellow ochre. It just happens to be a little bit more opaque. And actually most yellows do <laughs> end up being a little bit more opaque. I find that the, um, and you can kind of tell when you squirt it out in your palette, if you can clearly tell what color it is, it doesn't look like <laughs> really dark because watercolor often looks really dark when you squeeze it into a palette and you let it dry. Um, if you can tell what color it is, it's probably a more opaque color. And I think it might be fun to throw maybe a few little flowers in there or something with the crimson because uh, we've used that for mixing, but we haven't used it on its own. And I think it's really gonna make these greens pop. So I think I'm just gonna kind of dab in a few little flowers here with the tip of my uh, dagger brush here. And we're going over, and the crimson is a very transparent color, so we're going over green, so it's gonna limit how vivid and bright our crimson is, but it's still gonna give us a really pretty effect. So we've got a field of wildflowers, maybe some yellow. Maybe I'll get some just plain old lemon yellow. I might actually um, <clears throat> squirt that out because uh, I want to make sure I have a nice pure color. And that way, my 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 palette's getting a little dirty at this point. And I'm gonna switch to a stiffer brush. This is a Mimic Kalinsky. It's, it's a faux Kalinsky sable, meaning it's a little bit stiffer than like the faux squirrels. And I'm going to dab in some of those yellow flowers too. And a flower is just a dab here. That's all we're doing because even though this is a part that's closest to us in the painting, so it's closer to the bottom of the paper, it is, um, it's still tiny little like dandelions or, um, or those little paintbrush flowers. Little, little wildflowers. All right, now I'm just looking at the water. I think I might need to do a little something to our water in the background. So a little bit of Prussian, a little bit of cobalt. We want to take the colors we used in the sky because we have the, the skies reflect in the water. I don't want to go with anything too crazy dark. I'm going to go in and I am going to just kind of get along the edges. Now, I hope that this uh, this probably looked a little bit closer to like one of my live streams because I decided to use my camera I use for live streaming to record this to just kind of experiment um, because I had it set up still. 
and I knew that I could record longer in this format than in my um, my other for my other camera. So it was just a little more convenient. Hopefully, it looks good. I'm just kind of blending some of that out. I feel like I might need to blot some of that off. I kind of feel like I flattened it by adding that shadow right in there in the middle. Uh, I think that looks a little bit better. Maybe, um, I think, you know what, I'm going to grab that, that dagger brush and because now that I've kind of re-wet that area, I think I'm going to go in, I'm going to make some of that purple again. Uh, but, you know, I think I don't want a lot of water. Add some of that purple little Prussian. So I've got the, I've got that crimson red, I've got the Prussian blue and I've got the cobalt. That's nice and dark. I think I may just kind of Get a few of the edges here. Let's see how that looks. I don't know, it might be flattening things out too much because I might be giving too much detail that too far away. So I'm gonna soften that a little bit. Maybe pull that out a little bit there. I just felt like I, I had kind of like lost the leakiness of it. It didn't look so flat anymore. It looked like awkward. But the only way to learn what works and what doesn't is just to try it and to practice, right? There. I think that looks a little bit better. All right. I'm going to hit this with the dryer one more time because it's hard to see how it looks if you got some wet patches and some dry patches. And then we'll take a final look at this. I'll share some final thoughts and hopefully it'll inspire you to grab your paints and uh, paint this up for yourself. Okay, the painting is done. I'm really pleased with how it came out. Uh, it was a lot of fun to paint. Great relaxing uh, painting to get you started for the day. And this is easy. Anybody can paint it. I'm going to link to all the products I used in the video description so you can find them if you want exactly the same thing I used. Um, I really liked working on the handmade paper. I felt like it held the water a lot better so that I didn't feel like I was rushing, which is which felt really nice. And um, it was really fun to work with a paint straight from the tube that's inexpensive that I don't have to worry about wasting. So uh, very, very fun project to do. And I'd love to know what you think in the comments below and whether you think you're going to try it or not. Thanks again so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit that bell so that you get notified whenever notified it notified it. You get notified whenever I have a new upload. Um, and until uh, next time, guys, happy crafting.